Looking at the anterior knee, the patella, one can feel a bipartite patella usually in the superior lateral quadrant. There are four muscles of the quadricep, three of which are visible on an anterior exam because the rectus femoris covers the vastus intermedius. The obliquus portion here on the medial side should extend typically two centimeters uh, more distally than the uh, vastus lateralis. That's important because weakness here suggests uh, a propensity to recurrent dislocation. Um, it is strengthened by the last 15 degrees of extension. Uh, it's the only part of the quadricep muscle that anchors the patella medially. There are two sole side when these fully extended, on either, adjacent to the patella on either side. Even in obese people, when the patella appears like a sunken recess in a massive large leg, you should be able to see, just adjacent to the patella, two sulci. Milking the patella down in the setting of a pathological effusion can cause these areas to swell. There are some other areas that are worth noting. First is the inferior pole patella. Tenderness here, okay, suggests jumper's knee or assigning Larsen Johansson's disease. Just as to that, we have um, the tibial tubercle, okay? Tenderness here suggests Oshkosh slatter. Behind the, the, the patellar tendon is the infrapatellar fat pad or Hoffa's fat pad. You can appreciate it more when the knee is in, in flexion. The tendon bows out more and the fat pad can be here. People who land on their feet like cheerleaders, jumpers, this can balloon out and be a cause of inferior patellar pain. Two other points that are very important to notice on the anterior part of the knee. The first is the iliotelial banner tract comes down and inserts on Gurry's tubercle, okay, right here. So tenderness there in the setting of a tight ITB suggests ITB syndrome, okay. And also the pes anserinus, the, the, the site of insertion for the gracilis semitendinosis in the sartorius. There is a, um, a bursa there that can become inflamed and tender and is also a cause of, of, of knee pain. Now let's look briefly at the lateral aspect. There's a few things to note here. First, that the lateral, most, the lateral muscle of the hamstring group, the bicep femoris, comes down the lateral side and starts on the fibular head. It's the only muscle to do so. It's also the, the muscle most frequently injured in hamstring pulls. Um, the way to test for that is something we call the taking off the shoe or toss test. Very simple. You ask the patient to place the heel of their affected side into the insect of the other side and push the heel against the insect while lifting and flexing as if you're taking off your shoe. That isolates relatively the bicep femoris. If that recreates the patient's pain, that's very suggestive of a bicep femoris pull. Also behind the knee, um, there are occasional dislocations of the fibular head. These can be felt as a prominence here. The fibular head is reduced by feeling for the head and then just pushing it back into place. There should be a snap. The lateral pecondyle is felt just above the fibular head. The lateral pecondyle is the site of origin of the lateral collateral ligament. Tenderness here suggests an LCL avulsion or tear. We're now going to begin our examination of the ligamentous stability of the knee, as well as the, the, muscle, uh, the muscle strength about the knee. To begin, let's look at the test, the, the test for the ACL. The first and most classic test is the anterior draw sign. Simple, patient, uh, spacious supine, knee at 45 degrees angle, uh, hip at 45 degree angle. Just anchor the foot and pull, pull on, the, on the tibia to see if you have any uh, anterior uh, motion of the tibial plateau on the femoral condyles. Okay? The Lachman test, abduct the leg, Bring it down so that you're at the level of the table, kind of hang it off of the table a little bit, and then just hold with, with uh, your left hand, hold the patient's thigh, with your right, hold the, the tibia, and then just move the two together to see if there's any play. To do the test, one first takes the leg into full extension. If the leg cannot fully extend because of swelling, or quadriceps contraction, or a hamstring contraction, then the test is not going to be valid. Uh, so first see that the knee is in full extension. Then bend the knee and what should happen here is that in the presence of uh, an ACL tear, the, uh, 
the femur should drop back a little bit and the, the tibia should move up. Then one applies a, a pressure, a, a valgus stress, i.e. stress towards the midline while extending the knee and in the presence of an ACL tear uh, at around 20 to 30 degrees of extension the femur is going to pop up right? or the, the, the tibia is going to pop down. And the best place to appreciate this is the, putting your thumb on the Gertie's tubercle and you'll feel a sudden snap and that indicates a positive test. The key to testing for the posterior cruciate ligament injury is something called the drawback phenomenon. One wants to see when, you, when, when the leg is held in this position if in the presence of a PCL tear the tibia is going to fall posteriorly. If you can appreciate that here versus the contralateral side, you know, bringing both knees up in the flexion, holding the legs like thus, and you can tell that one, one tibial plateau drops posteriorly and you can see a slight bowing of the patellar, patellar tendon, then that indicates a positive test. Sometimes that's not diagnostic, so there are two other maneuvers we can do. The first is to, same orientation as the anterior drawer, this is the posterior drawer. Again, anchor the foot by sitting on it, and then push back to see if there's any sort of translation. Sometimes the tibia will have already settled posteriorly, so it's useful to kind of see if you can move it forward and then sink it back. All right? Often though, because it's already, it's already back all the way, you'll get a false negative. The way to overcome this is something called the active quadricep drawer test. One anchors the foot here to prevent it from moving, and then ask the patient to slide the foot out, I'll demonstrate, to slide the foot out along the course of the table. But instead of allowing them to make that motion, go ahead and slide your foot, you stop it, you anchor it. And when that happens, if the PCL is torn, when the quadricep engaged, try and slide the foot out, the tendon, which wraps you know, through the patella onto the tibial tubercle, is going to basically pull the tibia forward. So if I hold here and the patient has a PCL injury and I, and I say, go ahead and move your foot, okay, they try to slide the foot out, this, this tibia is going to jump up. That constitutes a positive test and is significant for a PCL injury. When discussing posture instability in the setting of PCL, it's also, to, it's also important to acknowledge that the posterior lateral quadrant of the knee, the stability gained by the popliteus tendon and various other ligaments between the femoral head and the, and the tibia, can also be jeopardized. In fact, often PCL tears occur in combination with the so-called posterior lateral instability. To test for that, we do the posterior drawer or quadricep active drawer, but what we do is we do it in different settings of uh, foot rotation. So we have a patient um, do quadricep active drawer with the knee, with the foot turned in, and with the foot turned out. Or we just do our posterior drawer test. If the, if the test is much more significant, if it feels positive with the foot in external rotation, that suggests posterior lateral quadrant instability.